Um, or a minor felony, you know, they make it seem like it's just terrible, the worst thing you can do in the world. They don't even see us people anymore. Ruffin is also licensed heating and air technician. This job, it helps me take care of my family. I actually got this job through a re-entry program. All of these workers are yeah, to welcome you to say hi to old friends, or maybe I should say long time friends, long time friends, I'll stick to that, and, uh, and new friends as well. Um, I want to say a special thank you to my colleagues at CNN who are here, and Rika Triggs, who runs my foundation, uh, and of course, Chris, I thank you so much for accepting uh, the invitation to be part of our celebration tonight. Uh, this week, of course, we are remembering Steve Jobs, who I think has had a tremendous impact on the entire world with his work. But there's a couple other people who have died as well, whose deaths could go unnoticed uh, if we let them, but we won't. Reverend Shuttlesworth, of course, and uh, Derek Bell of the Harvard Law School also died this week. And I think the two of them have in common that they both understood that they had to be uh, the voice for change, and that they also had to be the voice for people who often didn't have a chance to have their voices heard. And I think in some ways, that's what I have tried to do in a tiny way in my work. Um, my producers, many of them are in this room tonight, and what we've tried to do is make our work be the voice for others who often don't have a chance to have their stories told. So this gala is very near and dear to my heart. It continues to demonstrate voices through service. It gives updates on the Community Voices program at the Morehouse School of Medicine, the work that Community Voices does day in and day out for the underserved. Uh, really reminds me, I think, of a quote from one of the great American philosophers, which goes like this. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. That is the thought leader, Dr. Seuss, from a book that I have read to my children many times.
silver screen, he clearly embodies his foundation's principles of success. He uses his celebrity and influence to affect millions of lives. I know I have a voice, but I know I affect a lot of people. At the heart of Ludacris Values is his commitment to give back. Atlanta-based and impacting globally, Ludacris' vision is to help youth live their dreams. He takes his programs to the streets and into the communities. The Ludacris Foundation's three key focus areas are Ludacares, Leadership and Education, and Living Healthy. Ludacares. Hunger is a national problem, but one that can be addressed locally. For the past 10 years, the Ludacris Foundation has fed families in Atlanta, Georgia at Thanksgiving. There are many opportunities during the year where the Ludacris Foundation reaches out, whether it's during the holidays, a special hospital visit, or responding to a national disaster. They let it be known the underserved are not forgotten. Leadership and Education Leadership program challenges you to create a roadmap for their future by setting goals and taking specific actions toward meeting their goals to become great leaders. From profiles and leadership series to back to school events, the Ludacris Foundation inspires our youth to live their dreams. charity work and what you do for the community, it means a lot more to me. So first and foremost, thank you very, very much. When I see my songs were so dirty they could only play the instrumentals. Huh? That's how you do me? Okay. Finally, 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 I'm extremely honored to, uh, to meet a room full of people who care just as much and use just as much hand sanitizer as I do in my everyday life. Thank you to all the doctors in here who use hand sanitizer. My management, they were starting to think I was obsessed and crazy. Now they know I'm not crazy. That's what I'm talking about. This evening, I'm going to keep it brief and just and say what's on my heart and what's on my mind. I definitely want to thank all of the students in here and definitely all of the, the, uh, the board for giving me this award and I, I greatly appreciate it and want you to understand that I'm probably just as inspired and motivated uh, by you as you are motivated and inspired by me. And I had a, a long talk with Dr. Malkin over there and he was telling me about some of the breakthroughs that the students are working on and some of the breakthroughs that have already happened. And I'm just, I'm amazed at some of the things that I heard. I don't even know if I can talk about some of them a top secret, but I just kept... <laughs> I kept thinking to myself, maybe, maybe I can uh, somehow invest in some of this stuff so I can quit rapping and quit music and I can just become a millionaire for the rest of my life and I'll be good. <laughs> Thank you, Soledad. O'Brien, you, you made me feel like family ever since the first time I met you. And I think that any t anybody who gets a chance to meet Soledad, you get that impression. You just automatically feel like, you know, we've known you for years. So thank you, thank you for that. A very special recognition and definitely all the Morehouse School of Medicine Board of Directors. I want to thank you. I'd also like to recognize and thank Sally Davis and Kim Washington for working with my publicist Barry to make this evening happen. So y'all make some noise for them because I wouldn't be up here. Um, I also want to thank those people in the audience for being so supportive of Soledad's efforts to get the word out regarding those that are disenfranchised and locked out of the American dream. Soledad, you are a true champion of truth and dedication to providing a voice to the voiceless. And thank you for being you. 
and I strive every single day to, to be my best. And I know that uh, Soledad was asking me earlier, you know, how I got my team together. Well, for those that don't know, I know Kevin just said Chris Love will Love up there. We, you all know that I came from the radio station here in Atlanta, Georgia. But I was really young. I was like 17, 18 years old when I started working there. And I just remember, it's, you know, me being young and just wanting to have fun and just loving that I was working at a radio station and doing what I really love to do. And they came to me and said, in order to work here, you are required to do a certain amount of hours of community service each and every week. So I'm like, you know, this isn't jail. Like, this is a job. Why do I have to do I kept thinking, why do I have to do community service? So at that time, I was extremely ignorant to how great of an opportunity it was because when I actually got a chance to, you know, being a local celebrity and going to halfway houses and, and going and, and visiting children in hospitals is probably the best thing that could have ever happened in my life because I noticed how I affected these young people and just how I made a difference in their lives. And that is why you know about the Ludacris Foundation today. The Ludacris Foundation was formally established in December of 2001, right after I left the radio station, to make a difference in the lives of youth, families, and communities throughout the United States. The Ludacris Foundation has donated well over $2 million to support organizations that work to help families and communities. Thank you. Our programs and support initiatives have directly impacted thousands upon thousands of lives. And what I'm more proud of is the fact that, like I said earlier, we have over 10,000 hours of invested hands-on service. So I take pride in the fact that I'm there doing these things and not just cutting checks and let everybody else do the work. I definitely want to thank my mother, who is the president of my foundation, and it wouldn't run the way it runs without her. Kim Hutchins, Candace Dickens, of course, Barry Florence. And of course, when I say my mom, people always ask me why I'm so grounded. It's, it's probably because I'm a 34-year-old man, and my mom will still try and take out a belt and whoop my hair. <laughs> so thank you to my mother. Thank you, Soledad and the Morehouse School of Medicine. Greatly appreciate this honor. Tell me how you feel tonight about Soledad O'Brien's Freedom's Voice Awards. Oh my Awards. gosh, I'm so excited. And every year it's such a tremendous opportunity to hand an award to someone who is doing great work. We pick a person who's not only making a big impact in their community, but also who is mid-career, which I guess is another way of saying middle-aged, uh, but really the sense that you have a long way to go still. You're in the middle of your career, a lot more to do, a yes. lot more to make happen, and so giving an award now I think can draw a lot of attention to some of the great work that our honoree this year, uh, Chris, Luda Chris, Chris is, uh, is doing. It's amazing. Thank you very much. My pleasure.